Okay, so this is the Pearson BTEC Level 3 National Extended Diploma in Business. This is the specification, first teaching from September 2016. Um, we're looking at BTEC Level 3 Business, Unit 1, Learning Aim D, um, Examine Business Markets, and we're looking specifically at D1, Different Market Structures. Um, the market structures include perfect competition and imperfect competition. And we'll also be looking at features of different market structures, so the number of firms, freedom of entry and exit, and the nature of product. We'll be looking at D2 and D3 in the next coming lessons. Um, here's the assessment criteria, and as you can see, P6, M4, and D3 is highlighted. Um, and if I go on to the next slide, um, P6 states, it's explore how the market structure and influences on supply and demand affect the pricing and output decisions for a given business. M4 states, assess how a given business has responded to changes in the market. And D3 states, evaluate how changes in the market have impacted on a given business and how this business may react to future changes. So M4 and D3 look like you can speak about COVID there and try and apply um, changes in the market to that. Um, so market structures. Different types of businesses fall into different market structures. There are four main types of market structures. Perfect competition, monopolistic competition, oligopoly and monopoly. Um, and we'll be looking at all four of these types of market structures. And as you can see, um, monopolistic competition, oligopolies and monopolies are each a type or form of imperfect competition. Um, the first market structure we're going to be looking at on the next slide is perfect competition. So, perfect competition, the definition of it is a market structure where a large number of small firms sell identical products. Okay, so they're selling products which are like for like um, similar. Um, perfect competition is based on the following assumptions. Okay, all firms sell an identical product. Okay, or homogeneous product, the same product. And they have perfect substitutes. So they're literally, it's literally the same product that you're selling in, in different shops. Um, all firms have access to factors of production. So our, fact, uh, our factors of production is um, our labor, land, capital, and enterprise. Now our labor is the, um, our employees, our staff members, our workers, the workforce. Um, our um, our capital is the machinery needed to operate on a day-to-day -day basis or the machinery needed to produce our goods. Um, or capital can be our money used to start up the business. Um, and our land is our resources used to uh, create our, um, our uh, products okay, or services. Um, land can also be the uh, the actual business, the actual premises, um, the actual rent paid for the the premises where we operate, um, and enterprise is the entrepreneur bringing together all the rest of the factors of production. So, um, perfect competition is based on these assumptions. Okay, it's a model, and these are assumptions which are made. All firms are price takers and not price setters, which means firms under perfect competition do not set their own prices. They take the prices given to them from uh, consumers and customers, what they believe they should pay for a product, and they set their prices based on that. There's a large number of buyers and sellers, and there's no barriers to entry or exit, which means that anyone can enter the industry or market. There's no barrier to entry. There's nothing stopping you from entering the market. There's no costs associated with entering the market. If somebody saw um, profits being made in, in, in a perfect competition sort of market structure, they can enter it, they can make some money, and if they found that profits weren't being made anymore, they can leave that market, they can exit. There's no exit costs or anything like that. It's easy to enter, easy to exit. Another association or assumption is that there's perfect knowledge or information. So consumers and producers or business owners have perfect knowledge and information. They know everything to do with the product, how much it should cost, um, which shops are selling it at a certain price, so on and so forth. Um, and the main objective of perfect competition firms is profit maximization. Now the last point says that it, this is very unlikely to exist in the real world. Okay, so perfect competition, the market structure, very unlikely to exist in the real world where um, businesses are selling the exact same product. 
Um, however, we'll look at some examples, okay, um, which match very closely to these. So if I go to the next slide now, it says, can you think of some examples which might fit the characteristics of perfect competition? Um, if you're watching this, then you can just pause this video and you can have a think about it. If you are in a, uh, if you're doing this in class, then you can just speak to the person next to you, discuss this. If you're in like Microsoft Teams, you can enter your breakout rooms and speak to the people in your rooms. Um, just discuss. Think of some examples, okay? So we can pause it here. Okay, we're back now. You should have paused the video. Let's check out some examples. Okay, so we've got fruit. We've got vegetables, we've got corner shops, we've got chicken shops, and we've got the foreign exchange market. So obviously fruit and vegetables, identical products, you're going to get fruit and veg in different shops. It's the same thing, okay? Um, we've got corner shops as well. They pretty much sell the same thing as any other corner shops. Obviously you might get the one or two corner shops which don't sell um, maybe fruit and veg, let's say. Um, and there might be one or two products missing from certain corner shops um, but you know generally speaking all corner shops are just pretty much the same thing right so we can say that the corner shops are perfect competition um, chicken shops like Dixie, PFC uh, your basic like low level uh, chicken shops they pretty much sell the same thing you know chicken wings, chicken burger meals, fries um, kebab rolls maybe or quarter pounder burgers um, so they're a form of perfect competition as well um, they sell identical products you've got foreign exchange markets okay so forex or trading currencies um, currencies they, sh they should all cost the same amount um, if there's a market that's selling a currency for higher than what it should be going for um, no one's really going to buy from that market. They're going to go and find a different forex market or, you know, um, uh, trader, and they're going to buy from them the the price that it should be sold at. Okay, and that's how it works. So, so those are some examples of perfect competition. Now, the market price is set by the interaction of demand and supply. So. Demand is from consumers and customers, okay, how much they demand, how much they're willing to pay for a product. And supply is how much um, business owners or firms are willing to supply, okay, or are able to supply. Now that interaction between how much um, consumers are willing to pay and how much producers are willing to sell for, um, there's an interaction that happens and there's an equilibrium price like a middle price which is hit and that's what um, the price is set out okay when demand meets supply if there are a few firms in an industry output is high okay for these few firms okay output is high for these few firms um, and this should lead on to super normal profits for these few firms okay that are selling a lot to uh, customers and consumers now, if these few firms are selling a lot and they're making a lot of profit um, from selling identical items, that's going to entice and encourage more people to enter the market. Okay, So more firms will enter the market selling the same products as everyone else. Um, and if there's more firms, this will increase supply. And if there's more supply, if there's more people selling the same thing, this is going to lower output, right? per business anyway because now more businesses are sharing the same amount of customers okay customers are going to different businesses now um, purchasing the product for a bit cheaper maybe or just go into a, a corner shop which is closer to them in range um, this will lead on to businesses lowering their prices okay um, to try and get these customers uh, coming to their shops but they're only going to lower their prices to a certain amount they're not going to lower their prices all the way like they're not going to keep lowering their prices. They're going to lower their prices to a certain amount, which makes sense, um, so they can continue to make like profits still. But it won't be super no super normal profits anymore. It will be normal profits, okay? Because there's a lot of businesses now. There's a lot of firms supplying, and there's a lot of customers buying. So output will be lower, prices will be lowered, firms will be making normal profits. Now, due to perfect knowledge, due to the assumption that people um, uh, should have perfect knowledge and should know how much 
things cost in certain shops if a firm now lowers its price okay if a business lowers its price it will steal all their competitors customers okay because um, with perfect competition everyone's selling the same product same price all right so if one business decides to lower their prices what's gonna happen they're gonna steal all of the rest of the competitors customers aren't they okay because consumers have perfect knowledge they're gonna know that this business is selling the same product but for cheaper so they're all gonna to go to that shop to buy the cheaper product um, and the opposite is true as well if a firm increases its price it will lose all existing customers as they go to another seller because you're just selling the same thing as everyone else so what gives you the right to increase your price or charge a higher price um, you know what gives you the right to do that uh, where's the justification in that there's none okay so that's that now in real life firms set their own prices and are not price takers okay they set their own prices in a logical way based on demand and supply uh, but they're not price um, um, takers okay they don't just take whatever consumers deem is the correct amount of money to uh, charge okay they charge their own prices and in real life um, all consumers will never have full knowledge um, an example is that an example of that is if you get into like a car accident or you damage your car or your car is damaged or wrecked you take it to a mechanic um, the majority of people don't know what is wrong with their car okay um, and that's why they go to the mechanic they don't know how much it's gonna cost and again that's why they go to the mechanic the mechanic will you know inspect their car give them a quote tell them exactly how much it costs um, and more than likely the driver will be happy to pay that because uh, again they they lack information they don't know how much these things cost um, for all you know you could be getting ripped off you could be um, you know you just don't know do you um, unless you go to another mechanic and get like a second quotation um, and that's what um, the, that leads on to our next bullet point search costs okay search costs are impossible to avoid search costs is the costs involved when researching the price or the costs of a product or service okay now normally um, let's say you want to I don't know buy a pair of trainers or something you're gonna you're gonna research right you're gonna do some research online maybe you're gonna visit a few shops try get the you know the cheapest trainer okay that proves that we don't have full knowledge okay we don't know where the cheapest trainer is gonna be so we have to indulge ourselves in search costs okay um, patents are ignored by this market structure um, so, so again this market structure assumes that entry and exit is free um, and that there's no patents or there's no um, legal work or there's no um, set up or start up costs or anything like that okay um, and the last bullet point it's rare for entry and exit into an industry to be free it's very rare for people to just be able to just set up um, into a market or into an industry we're now looking at monopolistic competition the definition for monopolistic competition is a market structure where a large number of small firms sell differentiated products now monopolistic competition and perfect competition are very similar the main difference is perfect competition uh, they sell identical products all right homogeneous products but in monopolistic competition they're selling differentiated products that's the main difference um, there's many buyers and sellers again differentiated product we've mentioned they normally compete on non price competition okay so maybe the service that they are providing um, maybe the um, I mean, maybe certain advertisements that they can do um, and they try to compete on brand okay and brand loyalty um, again consumers and, and business owners have perfect knowledge there's plenty of consumer switching uh, switching to different you know uh, businesses because you didn't really like their product or their service that they provided you um, they're price makers and not price takers okay so in monopolistic competition firms are price makers they they sort of uh, make or create or set their own prices um, but the objective again is similar to perfect competition of profit maximization and very similar again bar barriers to entry and exit are very low okay they're not free but they're very low 
so it's easy to enter to enter this industry now again can you think of some examples which might fit the characteristics of monopolistic competition I'll give you some time to think about that um, again discuss with the person next to you or in your teams or in your peers or in your breakout rooms um, you can pause the video and have a think about that okay so you should have had a thought about that now um, let's check out some examples of businesses which fit monopolistic competition okay some examples include hairdressers coffee shops cafes care homes for elderly gyms um, taxi and minibus companies as well okay so for example hairdressers okay not every hairdresser is the same okay some hairdressers are female only some hairdressers are male only some hairdressers are unisex some hairdressers are for a certain type of hair or certain type of ethnicity let's say um, but when we say ethnicity it's more to do with you know if that person maybe feels comfortable going into that barber shop and getting their hair done there because we all know that certain you know you've got Turkish barber shops you've got black barber shops you've got a white or Caucasian uh, hairdressers and salons and stuff like that so um, it depends isn't it everyone's got a certain type of hair I personally wouldn't go into a Turkish barber shop because my hair is different um, so I hope that makes sense um, you've also got coffee shops as well so you've got different coffee shops might provide um, different types of coffee and um, you might want to go to the coffee shop around the corner from us the monarchs coffee house you might want to go to Costa you, or you might want to go to Starbucks okay um, you got certain cafes as well that might be differentiated through selling different things like some cafes might sell halal food some cafes might uh, be vegan only cafes for instance which is a, a new trend well it's, it's not really a trend but it's you know something that's up and coming recently um, veganism so there's there's all of that now as well okay um, so calves you know no two calves are the same um, you know you've got care homes for the elderly as well so if you've got any maybe grandparents that are a bit elderly and you're thinking okay it's time to take them into a care home you're not just going to send them into any care home all right it's not like going to a chicken shop and just getting a chicken burger all right where all chicken burgers are pretty much the same and same price care homes are going to be different you're probably going to do your research right see how many um, stars it is or the feedback or reviews from the care home or um, maybe do a bit of reading up and just see the types of, the, of services that they provide um, maybe when visiting hours are so you can go and visit um, at, a, at a good time uh, which is suitable for you and just other things maybe like facilities and stuff like that or how many people are uh, attending the care home um, you've also got gyms as well gyms are monopolistic competition um, again no two gyms are the same um, for instance you've got Evolve Gym which is based in Leighton slash Walthamstow they've got a sauna steam room you can see by the picture they've got a little bit of like a green synthetic grass there going on um, their lighting is quite cool um, and a lot of gyms don't have that okay a lot of gyms don't have that green part there or sauna and steam room a lot of gyms don't even have a changing room okay some gyms just have the area where you just go and work out they've just got weights and that's really it um, or, or like like a flat bench so you can work on your chest and that's really it um, you've also got like taxi and minibus companies so some taxi and minibus companies cater for maybe small children and parties some buses cater for a certain um, uh, amount of people so you can see on the right hand side we've got 36 or more seats and on the left hand side we've got a minibus for 35 or fewer seats okay so it depends um, what you're looking for um, and they offer differentiated services now monopolistic competition okay it's similar to perfect competition um, it's very similar but the main difference is product differentiation okay you're selling a, a different product which gives you a USP okay so if we're looking at the second bullet point now it gives you a unique selling point now a business that has a unique selling point um, has the ability to charge a higher price okay or a premium price 
but due to the large number of competitors offering similar products and services okay remember it's not the same but similar products and services so they have close substitutes you can't charge a, a price which is too high otherwise your customers or consumers will just go to your competitors right um, unless you're like really brand loyal and, and, and the customer service that you receive from a certain shop or firm is you know next to nothing and it, you can't really put a price on that firms can use non-price methods to increase brand loyalty which we mentioned before so for example um, you know a business can invest in the quality of ingredients they use for their pizzas okay or they can invest in training their staff so that their staff can provide a higher or better quality uh, customer service okay um, we've got an example we've got two examples here now so the gym in Walthamstow we can use that one and we've got Bannertine's gym or, or Bannertine's um, health club and spa uh, I think they've got one in Chingford um, with the gym it's low cost it's cheap uh, the membership fee is quite cheap and you pay on a monthly basis and there's many members so if you go during peak time it's very uh, it's very packed sometimes you can't even use the weights that you want to use um, they've got general equipment there they've got a few classes going on and you can book a personal trainer if you wish to as well in, in advance um, and the customer service is generally good in the gym okay it's generally good sometimes you know you might be outside and you can't get in um, because you forgot your code or something like that I think if you the gym is open 24 7 so if you go like near midnight time and you forget your code I, I don't know if anyone's even there sometimes workers aren't even there um, so yes but generally speaking customer service is good if you look at Bannantine's gym it's a health club and spa it's more on the high, higher end on, on the spectrum of gyms it's high cost um, it, they have an expensive membership fee and you usually pay yearly for it so you're locked in for the year um, and if you do want to quit or cancel your membership then you usually have to pay like a, uh, um, a, a um, like a fee for cancelling cancellation fee uh, usually fewer members so there's more spacious again they've got general equipment they've got classes they've got personal trainers they've got heated swimming pools sauna steam room synthetic grass physiotherapy if you need that it's basically got everything you need Bannertine's gym um, they've even got a car park available so that's really helpful and their customer service is like excellent next to nothing so um, monopolistic competition we're just trying to show you that yes ultimately they're the same thing you're working out uh, you're looking out for your health you're exercising but it's differentiated okay it's differentiated now we're going to look at um, the next market structure oligopoly okay the definition for oligopoly is a market structure where a few firms dominate the market okay a few firms dominate the market um, it can also be known as the top five firms dominating roughly 60 percent of total market sales okay now oligopolies are based on the following assumptions they're mainly differentiated products but can be homogenous as well Okay, but mainly differentiated products a few firms in the market which have a high level of market concentration so when you're looking at market share think about that circle think about that like a pie um, each slice has a high level of market concentration so they might have like 15% of market share 13% uh, 20% of market share um, and it should equate to roughly 60% of market share or total market sales they're price setters, oligopolies are price setters, okay? They set their prices. Um, we come across this word called collusion now, which, which is illegal in the UK. Collusion is when businesses or firms come together to set prices. That's illegal in the UK. You're not allowed to do that. Um, and Sainsbury's and Asda, I think it was, they actually got found out um, uh, colluding together and were fined like over a hundred million pounds which is mind-boggling isn't it um, but we'll check that out in a second they can charge high prices as there's not many substitutes or competitors okay so they, they can charge high prices if they wish to it wouldn't be in their best interest though because there are still you know major competitors there's just not as many um, barriers to entry and exit are high why because these businesses advertise a lot 
their premises or their rent costs is a lot. Okay, it's quite expensive. They've got a large scale of employees. They invest heavily into their research and development, and they can take advantage of economies of scale. And remember, economies of scale is as the business um, grows bigger or increases or produces more, its average costs decrease. Okay, its costs become cheaper. Um, we've got branding as well. So oligopolies take uh, a, a keen interest in branding. Okay, and they invest heavily in, in their promotion, which we sort of mentioned before, advertising. Okay, so with oligopolies, there are barriers to entry and exit. And they are quite high. Not anyone can just enter this market. Not anyone can just enter this industry um, because these businesses have invested a lot of money in these things. Okay. Now again. Can you think of some examples which might fit the characteristics of an oligopoly? I'll give you a second, I'll give you a minute, just discuss with the person next to you. Press pause and um, have that conversation and just have that thought. Okay, you should have had that thought now, you should have discussed it. Um, let's check out some examples, okay? We've got supermarkets, okay? You've got Asda, Tesco, Sainsbury's, you've got more, Morrison's, Lidl, Aldi. Um, Waitrose and we're looking at car manufacturers as well Toyota, Jaguar, Land Rover is a big one, um, Ford as well, Mazda um, you've got airline companies, so British Airways Virgin, EasyJet petrol stations Shell, British, British Petroleum, um, Total um, uh, yeah, so these are some examples of oligopolies. Okay, one of the main ones we use, or uh, teachers, or people, e economists, everyone likes to use, is um, the supermarket industry. Okay, so you've got your main big top um, supermarkets, and these supermarkets uh, are really competing against each other um, for market share. Tesco's is in the lead, and they've got the highest market share. And then I think it's as the next with Sainsbury's following. Um, the state of the UK supermarket landscape, okay? So this is how it looked in uh, 12 weeks to the 10th of August in 2019. So this was actually like, you could say about a year and a half ago, okay? Um, well, actually, so, so it's Tesco, Sainsbury's, then Asda, okay? So Tesco's has 26.4% of the market. Sainsbury's has 14.3%, Asda has 13.4%, and so on and so forth. Okay, you've got Morrison's here, Aldi, Lidl, the Cooperative, Waitrose, Marks and Spencer's, and Iceland. Okay, so that's that. Now, um, a bit of an analysis now. So, with a few firms, output or price decisions of one firm will lead to another firm following suit. Okay, so remember that uh, issue about collusion. Um, you know, if if one supermarket decides to lower their prices, other supermarkets are going to follow suit. Okay, now if they just follow suit naturally, they decide, okay, we're going to decrease our prices. That's fine. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing illegal about that. But if they if their managers or their you know their their staff or their CEO sit down together and say, look, let's set the price for um, an example is milk, okay? Um, if let's set the price of milk at a certain price, so both of our um, stores sell milk at the same price, um, that is collusion, okay? That is illegal, that's not allowed. If one firm cuts prices, other firms likely to follow suit, resulting in a lower income for the market as a whole. Therefore, oligopolies are unlikely to lower prices as a long term strategy. They might lower prices in the short run, they might have some special offers, but you know they, they don't really lower their prices for the long run usually prices increase in the long run um, it could lead to speculation or actual collusion okay so for example Sainsbury's and Asda in 2003 and 2002 set prices of milk um, and you can actually do some research for that you can go into BBC News um, or go into Google type that in you'll see it you'll find it okay and it's, it's a great article to read about actually it's quite interesting if one firm advertises or has a special offer, other firms are, are going to follow suit. For example, loyalty cards. Okay, Tesco's came out with their club card. Sainsbury's soon after came out with their Nectar card. All right. Um, 
and remember the club cards and nectar cards it's not just to give um, consumers points that they can then convert into money or they can use to purchase more goods and services okay the, the club card and nectar cards is to collect data that's what it's ultimately there for yes it's there to keep you in um, and to save you money and to make you feel special and to continue purchasing and to keep you locked in to uh, you know a, a repeat purchaser but it's ultimately there as well for Tesco's and Sainsbury's to collect big data on its uh, consumers and its customers okay um, oligopolies have the ability to stay open 24 7 um, which smaller businesses can't do okay we, we do see some corner shops open 24 7 um, but we're just trying to say that oligopolies usually um, stay open 24 7 like your Asda's and Tesco's and you know your Sainsbury's usually they're open 24 7 and they might close a bit early on a Saturday night and then they might close 5 p.m. on a Sunday but uh, on the weekdays they're open 24 7 and normally businesses or firms in perfect competition and uh, monopolistic competition don't stay open 24 7 um, oligopolies have a large numbers of staff or workers or labor um, and they can take advantage of economies of scale okay for example um, bulk buying so they can buy in bulk which means that they get a discount on uh, or not a discount but which means that um, it works out cheaper than buying individual products okay um, uh, the, the unit cost is reduced basically okay and then what they can do is they can sell their products for cheaper so that's why when you go into Tesco's or Asda or into supermarket, it's cheaper than what it is in a corner shop, okay? Because um, supermarkets can bulk buy. Now the last market structure is monopoly, um, and the definition is a market structure where one firm dominates the market. A firm with 25% or more market share. A pure monopoly has only one firm in the industry. Okay, so a monopoly might have other firms in the industry. Okay, it might have other businesses, but only one firm dominates, and people are familiar with that one company, and people buy from that one company. Yes, there are other small companies around, but that you know they'll never be as big as that one company, that monopoly. Um, if you want another definition, again, it's usually if you want to like categorize how to so so if you if you say okay so how can I tell when a business is a monopoly um, it's usually a business with 25% or more of a market share um, and again a pure monopoly is where there's only one firm there's no smaller firms involved so some assumptions of monopolies are that they sell differentiated products which is usually the case um, and they try and stay innovative and constantly bring out new products to prevent competitors from entering the market um, and always staying ahead of the game basically monopolies are price leaders they can exploit consumers and charge high prices okay no one's going to stop them from charging high prices no one's there's no competition to charge a, a you know a lower price than them they're a monopoly um, people want to buy from them because they trust them People want to buy from them because they're the only business really to, to, to purchase their their goods from. Um, I mean, the, the, the is it Office for tra for Fair Trading? Um, they might come and they might impose some regulations or some government restrictions or regulations that might happen. Um, but other than that, no one's really there to say you know you can't charge a certain price. Um, monopolies make super normal profits in the long run. Uh, barriers to entry and exit are extremely high. Okay, there might be patents involved, so no one can just um, you know enter the market because there might be a patent restricting them from uh, producing that same good for the next twenty years. Um, they might have a lack of knowledge, so they won't be able to enter the industry because they lack the knowledge uh, which is required to enter the industry and how to operate. Um, economies of scale as well. These uh, monopolies are usually huge industries or huge businesses. Sorry, um, huge firms operating in these in, in these industries, and they're taking um, you know a massive advantage of economies of scale. 
okay uh, maybe they, they've got a, a piece of machinery or a few pieces of machinery which is quite expensive that the average person can't buy and they're using these pieces of machinery to um, you know uh, produce their goods or services um, so there's high barriers to entry and exit okay um, and there's huge costs as well huge finances you might need to rent out a, a, a big apartment okay just think of, just think if you wanted to compete with someone like Amazon for instance it's virtually impossible okay they, they they've got uh, warehouses the size of football fields not just one not just two like 50 football fields okay and the technology that they use um, for you to buy that technology and to compete that will probably set you back and that's just you you haven't even you haven't even begun to sell anything um, again they invest heavily in their promotion and heavily in their research and development um, so other firms cannot keep up and you should have if you've researched Apple anyone you should have researched how much Apple invests in their research and development um, it's quite a lot it's quite a lot okay and that helps them stay ahead of everyone else and that helps them pr to prevent competitors from entering the market now again can you think of some examples which might fit the characteristics of a monopoly okay pause the video have a think about it okay we're back now um, we're gonna just go through some examples okay so some examples are Facebook um, they're pretty much a monopoly on, in terms of social media um, you've got Google their monopoly in terms of search engines um, you've got BT their monopoly in terms of broadband internet providers you've got Microsoft they're a, a monopoly in terms of uh, desktop operating systems and computer softwares you've got AT&T which is a mobile service in the US um, and their monopoly as well um, yeah, I've got a little chart here which shows you the monthly active users of selected social networks and messaging services worldwide so you've got Facebook with 2 billion 2.3 billion users you've got WhatsApp with 1.6 billion users and you've got um, I think Facebook Messenger with 1.3 billion users um, and as you go down you've got Instagram with 1 billion users um, so this is just to show you how many people are actually using um, these social media um, applications worldwide it's probably increased now because this was from July 2019 so it must have increased drastically um, we'll just have a quick analysis now so prices are higher than under a competitive market usually it leads to less output or restricted output which again leads to higher prices due to the low supply okay monopolies like to restrict output if you think about the PlayStation 5s um, when you know they the, the, the release date has been released but there's no supply no one's supplying them no one's selling them but where people do sell them customers or consumers are prepared to pay a really higher price than usual what the asking price is because there's low supply so you need to get that into your head okay when there's low supply of something um, there's more demand for it so that pushes the price up but when there's a lot of supply for something there's less demand for it so that pushes the price down okay um, firms are trying to sell what they can so they decrease their prices to sell it off when there's low supply uh, uh, sorry when there's high supply but when there's low supply and high demand firms don't need to decrease their prices there's so many people that want to buy their product from them they can increase their prices okay until the last person says you know I'm willing to pay a ridiculously high amount for whatever it is you're selling like PlayStation 5 for instance um, there's no incentive to be productively efficient as there's no competition okay so there's no incentive for, for monopolies to lower their costs because they hardly got any competition and um, there's less drive to be innovative as again there's no competition okay however you know we do see from time to time businesses are very innovative to again stay ahead of their competition right um, they can take advantage of economies of scale so again bulk buying um, purchasing um, high-tech equipment and machinery however diseconomies of scale can occur if, if the monopoly gets too big so diseconomies of scale is as the business produces more or increases in size um, its average costs actually increase 
Okay, and this can happen in a number of ways. Okay, maybe um, machinery isn't being kept um, up to date. Maybe it isn't being renewed um, because maybe they got so much machinery. Maybe uh, the workforce is getting so large now. Managers can't have those one-to-one -one conversations and motivate their workforce. Therefore, the workers make more mistakes. Um, maybe that there's so much staff and managers that there's miscommunication happening. Therefore, there's mistakes being made. Um, and this is a cost to the business, okay? Um, monopolies, um, monopolies can cause consumers to um, have a lack of choice, okay? Because monopolies don't need to produce different sizes and different shapes and different colors of items or products. Why? Because they're the only business, so they don't need to do that. Um, so there's a lack of choice for consumers. Um, and there's something called predatory pricing. So if there is a competitor that enters the industry, monopolies can indulge or in involve themselves in something called predatory pricing, where they lower their prices to next to nothing. And they're almost making a loss. Just so, um, you know, they get their competitors, this, this new competitor's customers, and this competitor doesn't stand a chance, basically. Um, you can't compete against a price which is... Um, causing a business to even make a loss, can you? Um, but then after that competitor leaves, the monopoly would then raise their prices um, again. Okay. All right. Now your task today is to research which market structure your business operates in. Uh, once you do that, you then need to discuss the features of the market structure and apply it to your business. After that, you need to briefly discuss the other market structures and explain why your selected business does not fit these market structures. Okay, thanks for listening.